Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Giant Take Podcast, and welcome to another losing episode in this 2024 season. The Giants move to 1-3 and three after a 20-15 to 15 loss against the Dallas Cowboys. Senators, we're coming to you right around the new day of midnight on Thursday night as the Giants have still yet to score a touchdown tonight, Alex. I don't know. Do you think it's going to come maybe after the final after the final clock ticks down to zero? I mean, I think we might be waiting till tomorrow, maybe Friday, uh, if they were still playing. So we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, the New York field goal giants are well and truly back, everyone. <laughs> yes, that nickname is here and uh, maybe here to stay. I don't know. Daniel Jones in this game. I guess tries his best to get the Giants on the board, but just overall, the offense was not able to get a touchdown on the board tonight. We'll talk about all of it, and let's start with the quarterback himself. DJ went 29 for 40 in this game, 281 yards, no touchdowns, one interception. It could have been a couple more, but because of the uh, free plays, it was not so. Uh, But Daniel Jones throwing that last His one interception being literally the last play of the game when he's chucking it deep down the right side into double coverage, trying to find a wide receiver to win the game or at least get down to the goal line. Neither occurs. He also, like I said, threw one earlier in the game, but it was a free play and he knew that. So he kind of just chucked it up. You know, it was completely underthrown and that ball was intercepted. Intercepted, excuse me. Uh, Jones' day-to-day was more of the same that we saw in Cleveland. He was luckily able to kind of get away with that stuff in that game. Today, not so much. Uh, You know, these are throws that the wide receivers were able to adjust and grab, definitely, for sure, in Malik Neighbors. And we saw an increased role of of Wandell Robinson tonight. Uh, Darius Slayton had a couple catches for, uh, you know, long gains as well. But um, still, Daniel Jones, not super accurate. Uh, we'll talk about Malik Neighbors and that final play when we get to it. Uh, but for Jones's perspective, it just sure the stat line was there. I mean, Alex, 40, 40 pass attempts tonight is a lot for DJ. That's a lot. That's the most by far he's had this season in a game, I believe. Um, 29 of those being completed. So just not able to find the end zone and still not really targeting his receivers. At least he's targeting his receivers, but the balls are – just really not where they need to be. And I think it was still apparent um, today or tonight, I should say. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's another night of Daniel Jones's stat line looking a lot better than how he actually played. The deep ball accuracy was awful. Uh, I think is the best word to put it uh, under throw to Slayton a couple of times under throw to neighbors when he was uh, beating the DB down the field. Uh, just a couple of passes that even he completed that, he should have been leading on the receiver or placing the ball in a different spot, and he just did not get that done. Um, so very frustrating, again, from Daniel Jones because people are going to look at the stat line, they're going to look at the QBR, and they're going to say, well, he had a pretty good game. Um, but that really doesn't tell the whole story, and that's why uh, the mix of statistics and also the eye test is ever so important in today's modern-day NFL because um, if you did not watch the game, you'd say Daniel Jones had a very stellar performance. And if you watch the game, you would say Daniel Jones was not good at all. So um, interesting how that all ends up uh, shaping with, you know, how, you know, statistics versus the eye test and how Daniel Jones has consistently been doing that this season. So anyway, enough Daniel Jones talk because it's just very frustrating. We know what Daniel Jones is at this point, and he's not going to really improve much past that. But moving to Malik Neighbors, um, you know, Neighbors, he had a really, really productive game. Um, not a lot of big chunk plays for neighbors, except for a couple of them, as we've seen in previous ones, but that more had to do with Daniel Jones, not really moving the ball down the field as much. Obviously the injury, the concussion at the very end of the game, hopefully that's not too, um, you know, worrisome for him and for the giants. Only thing I was a little concerned about Josh is I was uh, like, if I was thinking about this, you notice he kind of got shaken up a little bit earlier in that game. Uh, where he kind of seemed like he was moving a little more sluggish, didn't seem to really know uh, where, you know, he wasn't moving as fluid, I should say. I'm wondering if he felt the effects of that concussion a lot earlier uh, than the actual final play, because I was watching that and he didn't seem to be moving great. Could it have been another injury? I don't know. I'm not a doctor, so I'm just speculating here, but uh, something that I'd be interested to learn more about. I hope the reporters asked that post game because he did look a little shaken up 
uh, earlier on than that final play where he ended up going to the locker room. Yeah, I mean, that final play, too, is pretty scary. You have all the players and coaches, and including Brian Dable, surrounding neighbors as is he just made – you know, a, a game saving catch. Uh, and then he just kind of lies there, the team surrounding him. And after a few seconds realizing, oh, shoot, this guy is, he's hurting right now. Uh, and then Malik Neighbors just kind of was lying there. Uh, but the broadcast, uh, you know, as they should, they're, they're looking for the game's sake, not for Malik Neighbors to say cuts to different replays of if he was in, if he had possession of the ball and all that. And we're, like we're waiting to find out on the edge of our seats what actually happened to the wide receiver. Because the last time we saw him, he was just lying down with, you know, trainers sprinting surrounding him uh, and him just on the ground, uh, you know, what to what looked to seem like in pain. And the official report, as you said, Alex, being that Malik neighbors gone, uh, leaving the game with a concussion. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, you know, an, another game, and I, I hate to do this, but it's another game now, too, for Malik Neighbors where he's had those final moments at the end of games to make those catches, right? Um, now, I think Daniel Jones could have delivered a ball that was a little bit better, uh, for sure. But, um, you know, the, there's that. I mean... To be fair, 99% of receivers cannot toe-tap like Malik Neighbors did at the absolutely. end. Absolutely. That's something to keep in mind for sure, but definitely some frustrating moments. And then moving to like Wandale too, he had a couple of drops that really should have stayed in. Of course, on the other end, Wandale had a whole bunch of plays where he broke a tackle and got those extra few yards that ended up being so But he critical. didn't break that. There was that third, I think it was the third and goal, or yeah, I think it was the third and goal uh, where uh, there was the play to Wandale Robinson on the, the left side and the outside where he's like one tackle he can break and he just gets stopped and the Giants just go for another field goal uh, really deep in the red zone at like the three yard line. Um, yeah. I don't know if you remember that one, Alex. And in that, that particular case, Brian Dable needs to be going for the touchdown uh, given the yeah. given the scenario, given the way the offense has moved, given the issues getting that deep. Um, the Cowboys really at that point, their offense wasn't moving in touchdown mode you're most likely going to hold them to a field goal. Even if you don't get in, it's still an eight point game. It just, for to sure. me, the analytics said he should have gone for it. The vibe of the game, the way the game was playing out said he should have gone for it. So I, I was disappointed by that decision from Dable. Uh, and then he ended up forced to be, or he was forced to be more aggressive uh, down the line of the game when, you know, the giants really needed to stay in it by converting those fourth downs. So uh, I was a little bit frustrated by the conservative way that Dable took uh, the approach here, he saw the Cowboys team that has been struggling to start the season, didn't want to make, you know, didn't want to lose the game uh, instead of trying to win it. And I think that was a, a big fault of Dable. And I think that's going to be something that people are going to talk about over the next couple of days because uh, it just was not the right mindset to have, I don't think. He, uh, Brian Dable, we're getting updates from the press conference as we record, said, quote, I'm proud of the young man. He's made good decisions. He's thrown the ball where he needs to throw the ball, th throw the ball from the ball. Uh, <laughs> is uh, is is the quote there? Uh, Brian Dable obviously referencing uh, his quarterback Daniel Jones. Um, listen, and, and then sorry, going back to Wanda Robinson, Alex. Um, although there were some you know mishaps here and there, again getting an increased role in today's game, really looking like someone who can in the future with a decent quarterback complement Malik Neighbors really well. Two young wide receivers for the Giants drafted in the last couple of years really showing their impact, both having cap more than 10 catches in today's game, neighbors with 12, Wandell 11, neighbors over 100 yards, Wanda Robinson over 70 yards receiving, you know, a young core that can hopefully stay with this team and, and really do something, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with the rumors with Wanda Robinson and what's going on with him in the giant system that's been happening over the past few weeks. So hopefully that's all, you know, straightened down and everything's okay there. Running the ball now, the last thing on offense. Um, we can touch on the O-line too, that, Alex. I know you'd like to touch on them for a second because Andrew Thomas especially did contain the heck out of Micah Parsons in this game as best as they could, so I really applaud him for that. Uh, but in terms of the rushing game, the Giants are really trying to expose Dallas uh, from what they saw last week against the Ravens where you had a Derrick Henry who's a complete different beast than a Devin Singletary. But regardless... 
De- uh, Derrick Henry ran over 150 yards last week, had two rushing touchdowns. So the Giants probably saw that film and said, hey, let's try and do that too. And boy, did they try that. Uh, Devin Singletary had 14 carries tonight for a small total of 24 yards. 24 yards. That's it. That's all he had. Uh, Daniel Jones did not scramble outside of the pocket for any reason, really. Uh, Tyrone Tracy got involved for one catch outside the backfield. Besides that, barely ran the ball. It was not not a good day for the Giants rushers. Uh, they really tried to attack that quote-unquote weakness for the Cowboys that they saw against the Ravens. However, the Giants are not the Ravens. The Giants do not have a guy like Derrick Henry rushing the ball. Saquon Barkley is gone. He left last year. He left this past offseason. You don't have an explosive running back, so don't assume like you can do what the Baltimore Ravens did last week. You don't have a guy even similar to Derrick Henry. You have a what would be a backup on most, not most, some NFL teams in Devin Singletary, and it's just not it's not going to work with him there. Alex, go ahead. Yeah, and you don't have Lamar Jackson either uh, as the other option there in the running game, so... Uh, a lot of differences for the Giants versus the Ravens. But Devin Singletary, he had a couple of nice runs where he got the Giants out of some sticky situations, uh, which I do think needs to be applauded. The fumble issue he almost came one, up. He had run. one fourth and one conversion that I didn't even think they converted. But sure. Yeah, yeah so he had that. He had a, a third and a short that he converted also that he had a little bit of trickery. So um, overall, not a bad game from him. Stats, I think, will make it look worse than his actual eye test. So there's a, a flip of the Daniel Jones situation, I'd say, but um, you know, the fumble issue came up again. He did not hold on to the ball. It was ruled down, but he was just down by maybe a millisecond. Um, so that's an issue that really needs to be cleared up quickly. Uh, and I don't know what the giants do exactly to address that, but it needs to be addressed very quickly. And a quick brief uh, O-line talk. Andrew Thomas held Micah Parsons pretty well. I thought JMS had a pretty good game too. Uh, in comparison to the first few weeks of the season. And overall, the the offensive line gave Daniel Jones a pretty decent amount of time in the pocket, all things considering, given who the Cowboys have on that very, you know, scary defensive line with Micah Parsons, Demarcus Lawrence, uh, and everyone else there. So not so bad. Uh, it could have been worse. But Josh, unless you have anything else on the offense, uh, I think we can just take a quick break uh, and then head to the defense. Can you elaborate on, on Daniel? Daniel? Yeah, no, three games in a row. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of the young man. He's made good decisions. He's thrown the ball where he needs to throw the ball. I mean, the last play to, to Hyatt, that's a, you know, keep it down there and let's see if we can get a DPI or we can go up and try to make a play. Or, uh, but he's, I, I thought, you know, for three games he's been locked in. He's played well. He's seen the field. Uh, he's delivered the ball where he needs to. You know, again, we had some opportunities to, to continue drives uh, today as well. So I'm, uh, I'm proud of, of how he's performed, how he's prepared. He's done a nice job for us. All right. So the Giants defense, not much to talk about, but, but in a good way, they held this Dallas Cowboys team to only 20 points. Tyler Newbin led the team in tackles. They really spread the wealth. They only had Newbin being the leader in tackles, only had six of them. Uh, he's been playing pretty good though, uh, for rookie safety, only 23 years old, uh, stepping up in this increased role that he's had so far. Mike McFadden as well. Second in tackles with, with five, um, they held CD lamb sort of in check as much as they could, I guess. Let's just say Seven this, the catches. touchdown was awful. The touchdown was absolutely yes. awful. Banks, for sure. lack of effort, Tyler Newbin, lack of effort. The jogging at the end, I've never been so mad in my life. <laughs> um, it was it was frustrating. Yeah, I mean, you see Lamb get to the 20-yard line, and then you see a couple Giants surrounding him, and you're thinking, wait, maybe they can make that tackle, and then they kind of just let him cakewalk into the end zone. I, I That was very confusing. I agree. I feel like it was me during gym class in middle school with uh, yeah, the way like that Deontay Banks okay. was running. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it was, it was like when you when you go out to the field and then it's like the option of you can just walk the track. That's kind of what <laughs> it's kind of what it looked like from yeah. those. Guys. Or it's like the gym teacher made really stacked, te- or it was pick your own team day or whatever. And there's just that really one stack team, and you know. <laughs> All right, enough still- gym class <laughs> references, <laughs> but uh, but no, sorry, I I mean that that kind of was like 
out of my mind. Uh, I forgot about that CD Lamb touchdown, but absolutely agree, Alex, because I remember CD Lamb catches that ball and he gets to the 20, 25 yard line, and you see Giants in your screen and you're thinking, all right, maybe they make this tackle. Nice game by CD Lamb, but maybe they make the tackle and then he like runs into the end zone in a straight path. And I'm thinking, that's weird. I feel like you could have cut him off and gotten a two string tackle, but they did not. Besides that, as much as you can contain one of the best wide receivers in the NFL to seven catches for 98 yards and a touchdown, I feel that they did that. I will applaud them for it. Um, the second most targeted player, also with seven targets, actually, and seven rece- or with seven receptions, I should say, the second most player with the most receptions um, was Jake Ferguson, the tight end, with 49 yards there, but no touchdowns. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought overall, you know, Dak Prescott, is he proving his contract worthiness uh from earlier this season i don't think so 22 for 27 tonight 221 yards and two touchdowns looks good but i think the giants d-line although they weren't really you know putting up sacks um it was it was pressure wasn't anything close to what we saw against Deshaun watson that's what i wanted to see tonight was more of that but also you got to give credit to a different cowboys o-line that's not the Browns offensive line. I mean, that O line for Cleveland is crumbling uh, and the Cowboys for what I feel like Alex has been five to 10 years now has always been solid. Um, Kayvon Thibodeau gets a sack though tonight, which haven't, I feel like heard his name uh, a ton this year besides like the overall saying, Oh, we have Kayvon Thibodeau, Brian Burns, extra Lawrence, you know, but putting his name actually down on the stat sheet for a sack was nice. Yeah, pretty decent bounce back game for him. Uh, wasn't perfect. Had a couple of he jumped off sides. Um, had a couple of penalties. He had a couple of bad plays, missed tackles. But overall, of course, now that I'm saying that, it sounds like he had an awful game. But uh, I swear he did have a pretty solid bounce back uh, of sorts, considering the first three weeks uh, of the season where he really was kind of invisible uh, for the Giants. Brian Burns not too impactful either, but. Uh, at least Brian Burns, I think, had a little bit more of an impact uh, than Kayvon Thibodeau through, uh, through three weeks. But in this one, Kayvon Thibodeau definitely stepped up, and um, I, I was happy to see that there's still life inside of him. Aziz Ojolari had another good game uh, in some situational uh, pass rushing uh, scenarios, so I was happy to see that. And uh, another guy, one last guy I'll point out, because like you said, not a lot to talk about with the defense here, but I thought Cordell Flott actually had a pretty solid game playing on the outside. Uh, you know, Jalen Tolbert, who I had as my guy to watch, really wasn't too involved. Um, and, you know, Brandon Cook's not too involved either. So uh, in terms of the CB2 spot, uh, I thought Flott did a pretty decent job besides that one missed tackle. Yeah, Alex. And then um, I think that really does it for the defense. We can go to special teams and uh, talk about a bounce back game. Greg Joseph misses the one, uh, the one um, field goal, excuse me, in last week's game. Brian Dable comes out this week. He's still going to be our kicker. What what a form of confidence shown by Brian Dable as Greg Joseph goes on a tangent. Five for five. 52-yard long field goal today. Our only form of scoring in this game. Credit to you, Greg Joseph. However, I wish it wasn't just you, Greg Joseph. Good job. You played your position well. You did what you needed to do. You made all your field goals. Now, uh, the rest of the Giants team, let's not have that be our only form of offense, maybe. What do we think? Um, but, I yeah, mean, I mean, if we're talking about special teams primarily, Greg Joseph did his job, and that's really all you can ask from a kicker. It's no fault on him. Brian Dable brought him out to set, to make those field goals, and that's exactly what he did. So he did his job, for sure. I mean, one last group of uh, players, I guess you could call them almost, uh, in this one that I think we should wrap it up with the refereeing was absolute the uh, officiating sorry yeah absolutely awful absolutely awful throughout this whole game from front to back beginning to end however you want to put it just even just making easy simple calls holding calls uh offside calls just took forever they had to talk to each other no one could figure out their stuff million flags flying all over the place uh, it was, and the face mask obviously was an awful call, but just overall very, very frustrating to watch. Even from a neutral perspective, I'd have to imagine the game moves so slowly uh, because of just poor officiating and lack of communication. So, very frustrating to see. I wasn't going to mention it just because I hate 
you know, blaming games on that and that stuff. Well, I'm so. not blaming the game on it. The Giants deserve to lose. Don't get me wrong, but the officiating was terrible. Sure. I mean, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you stick with that. I just. I don't like doing that. I I normally would, but I. I'm trying to hold back here. So. Um, Fair enough. But yeah, uh, Thursday night football. Giants lose twenty to fifteen to the Dallas Cowboys once again. Not able to score a single touchdown in this game. Um, that's where we leave you on a, on a Thursday night or a Friday morning at that point, as it's twelve oh two. We have a little bit of a break now. The Giants are going to have a little bit of a break themselves. They can sit back, relax, I guess, and enjoy their Sunday at a one and three record. I don't know how much relaxing will be done, but. Uh, that is where they're at right now. They're going to head all the way to the opposite side of the United States, to the West Coast, head up to Seattle, and play the Seattle Seahawks for a 4.30 start on the following Sunday, next Sunday. Um, but we have some time until then for a game that is right now looking like a uh, another, another Giants loss, I would have to say. Seahawks, remember, undefeated head of the NFC West, ahead of all the other teams. So I'll have to see how that game goes. But for right now, thank you so much for watching and or listening to this episode of the Giant Take Podcast. Hit the subscribe button down below. If you're watching this video, hit that thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. Also, follow us on our social medias, at the Giant Take Pod on Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Alex on Twitter at anorin 23 I'm on Twitter at joshola 29 Have to... Go to bed and wake up in three hours, basically approximately, to head to North Carolina. No, I'm not happy about it, but the giant take grind lives on. And so, but I am happy about going to North Carolina for sure to cover Syracuse volleyball, which you can get all the live updates on my Twitter. Will the Orange stay undefeated? Find out actually later today, as of this Friday. They're going to play in their first ACC matchup against UNC down in Chapel Hill. I will be there in approximately. 17 hours, 16 hours. There you go. We sleep until then. We sleep until then for sure. Um, but that's going to really do it here, Alex, right? Yeah. I mean, have fun in North Carolina for sure. Um, you're going to the Duke UNC football game too, right? That's on Saturday, yes. Saturday, yes, yes. I'm mixing up the days already. It's so late. But two very mid bad football teams, by the way. Like it's not even for the it's not like quality of the of course, game, but you know, still, still be fun. I'm sure. Um, yeah, you know, I don't Definitely. know. As someone who has no football at their school, it sounds exciting. But anyway, thank you everyone for listening to today's episode of the Giant Take Podcast. Hope everyone is having a good week so far, despite the Giants, uh, and hope everyone has a great weekend. Uh, and can enjoy some non-Giants football before we're back next week looking forward towards the Seahawks. Peace.